All right, so I want you to take a look at these photos. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous, right? A photographer spent hours in the woods to capture a couple's sunrise engagement. Ah, oh, it worked out so great. Um, but there's one problem. Yeah, he took pictures of the wrong couple. And now the photos have gone viral. Timon Fernandez sorts it all out. The moment I saw you, I knew we were going to be together forever. It's a couple's private proposal <laughs> that's getting worldwide attention. Who you mean? Only Dallas attorney David Lay and his fiance Jenny Pham never expected the images of their special moment would be shared with the world. To me, I feel like I have the most perfect fiance, and he did all this for me. You see, David and Jenny describe themselves as a couple of pranksters, and they have a pretty funny story about how these unexpected photos of David popping the question came to light. I had no clue. I was tunnel vision trying to make sure this thing turns out right. David planned a big hiking trip to Whitaker Point in Arkansas last Saturday. Executing the proposal didn't quite go the way he wanted. I, I called about 10 to 12 different photographers trying to hire someone, uh, but every, every, no one was available. So the groom-to-be tried to be clever, convincing Jenny to help him record the sunrise. I thought that was weird because he had GoPro set up already. Little did the couple know, Arkansas-based photographer Jacob Peters was perched on a cliff across the way. He was hired to take photos of another couple's engagement from the same site. That pair didn't show up on time, and later when the photographer realized he was snapping photos of the wrong set of lovebirds, Peters shared the story and pictures on Facebook. A link eventually made its way to David and Jenny. The story, the day, I was like, I think that's us. And as you read more into the story, I'm like, that is us, that is us. For this couple, seeing these surprise photos is making the engagement memories even more special. Would they change anything about that day? No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That, that was the perfect weekend. Yeah, Lee and Pham said they wouldn't change anything about their special day and the special set of memories that came out of it. We begin at 6 with breaking news on an explosive report from the Washington Post. In a report that broke online just after five this evening, the Post says President Donald Trump revealed highly classified information to the Russians during an Oval Office meeting last week. Current and former U.S. officials tell the Post the disclosures jeopardize a critical source of intelligence on ISIS. The information, considered so sensitive, it wasn't even shared with allies and was tightly restricted within the U.S. government. More on this later. Also, right now at 6, a son records an elderly father being frisked by TSA agents. He claims it was excessive and unnecessary, but the TSA says they had their reasons. The North Potomac man says his anger grew by the minute when his 92-year-old father, who uses a wheelchair, was frisked by a, a TSA agent at BWI Airport this weekend. Well, tonight the TSA is defending its actions after recent security threats, including those from some in wheelchairs. WUSA 9's Janice Park has both sides of the story. Probably the sweetest guy that you can know. He's 92 years old. I couldn't believe it. Daniel Labstein says he still can't believe what happened Sunday evening at BWI Airport. He says his father's not a threat. He's 92. The first thing that went through my head was this is totally inappropriate. And I even said to the TSA agents, is this really necessary? Epstein says his father was trying to get back to Norfolk, Virginia, when his palms were swabbed for drugs during a random screening. The test gave a false positive, and that's when the frisking began. I was pissed. I was very upset. And at that point, when the TSA agent told me to get back, I took out my cell phone and I recorded about two, what was about two and a half to three minutes of video of what was probably another five minutes that continued as they frisked my father from head to toe. Lapstein says his father's wheelchair was pushed away and his elderly father could have easily fallen. More of the personal space being um, compromised. Um, I was very, very upset when the TSA agent um, moved his hand across my father's groin area. We asked TSA tonight whether the pat down was appropriate. TSA says it screens all passengers, including individuals in wheelchairs. Not too long ago, a passenger had a loaded gun concealed in his wheelchair. TSA also has a special hotline to assist passengers with disabilities or medical conditions. 
deemed not a threat, the senior lab stain was eventually let go to his gate. Total embarrassment to subject someone who is clearly not a threat to national security. Well, the TSA says they also make special accommodations for elderly people, allowing them to keep their shoes and even a light jacket on. First, we've got a developing story tonight in the Virginia governor's race. We're standing by for word on the future of candidate Corey Stewart's campaign. The Republican candidate says he'll issue a statement on his Facebook page at 7 o'clock tonight. That's less than an hour from now. Sources tell WUSA 9 Stewart is deciding whether or not to stay in the governor's race. That decision relates to at least in part to this protest led by well-known white nationalist Richard Spencer in Charlottesville on Saturday, carrying torches and chanting, you will not replace us. You might recall Spencer and his followers marched to the statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee to protest its removal. Republican leaders condemned that demonstration. Now Stewart, who has led his own protest at the very same statue, is deciding whether to disavow Spencer and the rhetoric that emerged at the protest or embrace it and then leave the governor's race. The decision may also come down to his chances of winning. Within the last hour, we received the Washington Post school poll. It shows Gillespie with a commanding lead among likely Republican primary voters. He's 20 points ahead of Stewart and 23 points ahead of Frank Wagner. 60% of those polled think Gillespie has the best chance to win in the general election also. Just 7% think Corey Stewart can win. We're going to have Stewart's decision coming up later this evening on Off Script at 7. President Trump says he could name a replacement for fired FBI Director James Comey before the end of the week. Over the weekend, the Justice Department interviewed eight people to fill that job. They include Republican Senator John Cornyn, former Republican Congressman Mike Rogers, and President George W. Bush's Homeland Security Advisor, Fran Townsend. On Capitol Hill, Democrats are threatening to vote against anyone the president picks unless a special prosecutor is named to take over the Russia investigation. Neither President Trump nor his staff are elaborating on his tweets, suggesting that he may have taped his conversations with Comey during a visit to the White House in January. Democrats and Republicans say if those tapes do exist, they want them preserved and turned over to Congress. The full Senate will get a briefing on Comey's firing on Thursday from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. That massive ransomware cyber attack that hit some 150 countries on Friday spread to Asia today. The malware program is called WannaCry. It exposes some Microsoft operating system. And here's how it works. The virus encrypts files. Then the hackers demand some $300 to decode those files or destroy them. More than 200,000 users have been affected. Security experts say the U.S. did not get hit as hard as some other countries because most people in this country have updated versions of Microsoft. Let this be a hint not to ignore the software update notices that you get regularly for your device. Tonight, North Korea is boasting about what it caused a successful test of a new ballistic missile designed to carry a heavy nuclear warhead. Stay Run TV has released video of a launch it says took place on Sunday. The video shows leader Kim Jong-un inspecting the launch site and celebrating afterwards. The White House is calling for tougher sanctions against North Korea. The U.N. Security Council will hold closed-door talks sometime tomorrow. President Trump is paying tribute to law enforcement officers who gave their lives in the line of duty. He spoke outside the Capitol building at the annual Peace Officers Memorial Service. Because you do not hear nearly enough, I want you to know that patriotic Americans of all backgrounds truly support and love our police. President Trump signed a proclamation declaring this Peace Officer Memorial Day. He said the White House will be lit up in blue lights tonight to honor the 394 officers killed in action last year. First Lady Melania Trump has confirmed her son Barron will attend a private school in Maryland this fall. The 11 year old will travel each morning from the White House to Potomac. He will attend St. Andrews Episcopal School. The First Lady says St. Andrews is known for its diverse community and commitment to academic excellence. Tuition for grades 9 through 12 is more than $40,000. Porter can't find anybody. He gives it to all. Working against Bradley for three. John Whoa! Oh what a shot. Yeah, what a shot. And everybody's asking, can John Wall and the Washington Wizards do it yet again? 
A final game seven against the Celtics is tonight in Boston after Friday's thrilling last seconds win at the Verizon Center. Frank Hanrahan standing by live in Boston. And Frank, what are you feeling and what are you seeing from this Wizards team? They have yet to win on the road in Boston. I know, I wanted to get the pulse of the Celtics nation here at the four points. But, but, but I gotta tell you something, we're from DC. So we're coming here to get a victory tonight in game seven. What do you say to that? Let's go Seas! All right, John Wall broke your guy's heart in game six, but the Wizards have not yet won on your home court. Why are you guys so good here at TD Garden? We got, we got IT, we got the king of the fourth right here. He's going to come through, bring home the dub, and uh, you guys, you Wizards fans, can go back home salty. Uh, we shall see. Tip off at 8 o'clock. Guys, thank you. Celtics fans, best of luck. We shall see tonight. Personally, I feel pretty good about the Wizards' chances. Let's send it back to you guys at DC. Frank, Frank Hanrahan, brave man, hanging out with the enemy. Thanks a lot, Frank. I am. I am, yes. All right, get ready for a taste of summer this week here at home. Chief Meteorologist Top Rochette is tracking some much hotter weather on the terrace. Hey, Top. Yeah, it's going to be uh, like July, really. We've gone from March on Saturday to July on Wednesday. We'll start with the uh, future cast for tomorrow morning. You wake up 7 o'clock, 57 downtown, 50 in Manassas, and 52 in Hagerstown. I'll come back and tell you why. I think tomorrow's going to be the nicest day of the week and perhaps the month. And we'll talk about whether or not we're going to break any record highs later in the week. Also coming up, federal government issues a warning to a restaurant that served horse meat on its menu. We've got breaking news out of New Jersey this evening. A private plane has crashed into a warehouse in the town of Karlstadt. The pilot and co-pilot both dead. Plane carried no passengers. Right now, there are no reports of anybody on the ground being hurt. The plane flew out of Philadelphia, went down on its approach to New Jersey's Teterboro Airport. A bus crash injured dozens of kids on a field trip and shut down I. You know what? I think it's your read. Yeah, I think I'll take that one again. Bruce was just talking about this bus crash that injured dozens of kids. Uh, it also shut down I-95 near Hover to Grace, north of Baltimore, and state police say it started when a car tried to pass a bus and then hit it. Well, that bus overturned. Most of the injuries were minor, but there was one child and one adult who were flown to the hospital. That bus was carrying children from Philadelphia who were planning to do some sightseeing in D.C. Police have reopened all of the lanes now of the highway. We've got some dramatic video of a deadly high rise fire in downtown Pittsburgh. Those are the smoke and the flames that poured from the sixth floor of the 17 story Midtown Towers apartments. There was burning debris that fell from the building and firefighters rushed to get everyone out safely. It was like a bunch of white smoke and the firemen, you know, helping everybody and everybody running and hollering and screaming. You know, it was very it was horrible. It was quite a scene. Two firefighters were trapped and rescued. They are both expected to be OK. One woman who lived in that building died in the fire, and it is still not clear when the residents will be allowed to return. Bruce. 
Leslie, you might have heard about the Pittsburgh restaurant that served horse meat last week. Well, tonight, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has warned that restaurant not to do it again. The Cure 